I don't have any presidential conversations to tell you about. Um, I can confirm that uh, U.S. officials, including uh, uh, senior officials of the National Security Council, have been in touch with their Chinese counterparts to uh, reiterate uh, our country's continued commitment to a one-China policy. Uh, this is a policy that is based on three joint uh, U.S.-China communiques that were negotiated by uh, different U.S. presidents and different parties, uh, and, of course, by the Taiwan Relations Act. This is a policy that's been in place for nearly 40 years, and it has been focused on promoting and preserving peace and stability uh, in the strait. Uh, this has uh, the adherence to and commitment to this policy has advanced the ability of the United States to uh, make progress in our relationship with China. Uh, it, of course, has benefited the people of Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan, after all, is the ninth largest trading partner of the United States, uh, and they certainly benefit from uh, peace and stability in the strait. Uh, and pursuit to pursuit of and commitment to uh, that peace and stability advances uh, U.S. interests. Uh, if the President-elect's team has a different aim, uh, I'll leave it to them to describe. I think it's hard to uh, determine exactly what the aim was of the the President-elect. Uh, I know both the Vice President-elect and his campaign manager were, uh, when asked about this over the weekend, indicated that these were uh, courtesy calls or that this was a courtesy call, and the president-elect was merely returning that call. Um, the Washington Post today tells a different story, uh, with some Trump aides indicating uh, that this was a long-planned call uh, and that this is part of a broader strategic effort. It's unclear exactly what the strategic effort is, what the aim of the strategic effort is, and it's unclear exactly what potential benefit could be experienced by the United States, China, or Taiwan, uh, but I'll leave, uh, I'll leave that to them to explain. You know, my understanding is that these, well, the, the, the facts are that these th communiques were negotiated, one in 1972 by President Nixon, uh, one in 1979 by President Carter, and one in 1982 by, by President Reagan. Uh, and uh, those joint communiques have guided our approach to this region of the world. Uh, the Chinese government, Beijing, places an enormous priority on this situation, and it's a sensitive matter. And some of the progress that we have made in our relationship with China could be undermined by this issue flaring up.